Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode in Roblox Scripting. Today we're going to be discussing and learning about events. Now, events in scripting are actually very similar to events in real life. So let's think about an event in real life. You can have an event such as maybe a concert, or a big basketball game, <clears throat> or maybe a dance at your school. Those are all events. Although there's other types of events when something happens. Not like it's planned, but it just happens and then you hear about it. Uh, a good example of this would be possibly when someone gets engaged or a team wins a championship. And you hear about it because you're listening in and you're keeping track of uh, this person or this team's uh, progress in whatever it is they're going through. And when you hear about it, you react. Say your favorite football team won the Super Bowl. Well, you're going to react and you're going to cheer and shout and be very excited for your team. Although you probably watched the game, so you, you, you heard it then. But anyway, um, so that's an event. An event is when something happens and then listeners, and in the case of the Super Bowl, uh, there's millions of people listening to that like listening to the one event, if you will, uh, and you'll understand what I mean by that in a minute. Um, the, they listen and everybody reacts in unison. There's people throwing their hats off and pouring like Gatorade on each other everywhere all at once. So let's go ahead and translate this idea of events and something happening into Roblox. So let's go ahead and insert a part. And let's move it closer to where, why? My cursor's looking weird, sorry. Uh, closer to where the player will spawn, which is closer to about here. Um, now let's resize it so it's a bit bigger. Like that. Okay, boom. Um, anchored, all right. So now we're going to insert a script into server script service. And this script is just going to say local local part equals game dot workspace dot part. So what this means is game is like the explorer window, right? We we covered that. Uh, workspace is this part right here, workspace, okay? And then part so it goes game, you can kind of see that as explorer.workspace.part. Uh, that's how you kind of traverse the explorer in scripting and find different parts is uh, sort of by this method of starting somewhere, a period, different name, period name, uh, going down the list, right? Okay. So local part equals game.workspace.part. Now here's the events part. Part dot touched connect function hit. So we already understand functions and we understand arguments and parameters. If you don't understand this part, uh, this function part, uh, please go back and watch the episode on functions. It's an introduction to scripting. Um, but this part might be new. This part dot touched connect. So part again. Um, and I'll have a video on this by the time you're watching this. I may already have the video on this, uh, but it's just traversing through Explorer, um, like different parts, right? Okay, part dot touched. So touched is what we call a property of the part, and this property is an event. So this event uh, it monitors when the part is touched by something. So kind of like if you were to go up to your friend and you were to slap their shoulder, that you would touch them. That would fire the touched event. Like your friend would feel it, right? So the touched event just means when this part is touched by anything else, any other parts, then this event is going to do what we call fire. And I'll explain what that means in a moment. First, let's just get through this line. Then we put a 
a colon, which means like to fire a function on it. Okay, so dot separate uh, individual like parts of something or properties, and colon separate or call functions. Okay, and then connect. So connect is a function on the event, and what this does is it connects a function to the event. So when the event fires or when the event happens, the function is called and therefore evoked and therefore whatever is in the function happens. Okay? So part.touched, this is an event, and this event will fire every time the part is touched by any other part. Connected to this event is a blank function with the parameter hit. Now you might be, or yeah, the parameter. Now that parameter will be filled with another like part property. It'll be populated by a value of another part um, when the part is hit. So when when this is hit and this function is called, this will be another brick. This variable would contain another brick, another reference to a brick. And again, I'll be having a video on that soon. So part.touchConnect function hit. What this means is anything we put in this function will listen. This, this function is listening to the touched event. So every time this part is touched, whatever's in this listener will happen. And all we're going to do is we're going to do part.brickColor equals brickColor.random. And I haven't gone through all of this yet. Again, I'll have a video on all of this. Um, but this basically is just going to do part dot brick color and it's going to change the brick color of a part to a random color. So that's just that's the color of the brick. Okay, pretty pretty straightforward uh, concept. So now we're just going to do test and play solo. And looky here, every time we touch this brick, it changes color. Okay, so what's happening here is right now the brick is one solid color. As soon as we touch this brick, the touched event fires, and you'll see it changes color multiple times. That's because our arms are swinging and there's different parts of our body hitting it. So it fires the event multiple times. But every time we touch this brick, it fires the touched event. And that means that all of the listeners on that event get fired simultaneously or invoked simultaneously, meaning all of the functions that are listening to the touched event of this part, they'll happen at the same time. So going back to our like football Super Bowl analogy, uh, when one team wins the Super Bowl, or let's just say they get a touchdown in the Super Bowl, millions of people are going to scream and cheer, right, all at once. And then a million other people are all going to go, no, boo, because they're rooting for the other team, right? So all of them all at once when they see that happen over their TV they're all going to react at once they're all listening in watching it and then when something happens when say a touchdown happens everybody reacts right away so that's similar here every time this is touched the script that has this function this function is called and it reacts to this so it just touch react okay so hopefully that makes sense. All we're doing is we're getting a reference to a part. Again, there will be videos on this. When the part's event touched is fired, we're con or well, on the touched event, we are connecting a listener. That's this. This function is called the listener function or the handler function. Um, and when this listener or handler is called, everything within it happens. And it is called when the touched event is fired so this function will happen every time the touched event fires so that's why it was changing color every time we touched it hopefully that makes sense to everybody if it doesn't go ahead and post a question down below uh, or go to the forums thank you guys for watching this has been code theorem and I'll catch you guys next time